surge. And then I will speak, uh, I will make a, a short introduction on da data simulation that you already see. And then uh, I will speak uh, of uh, a simulation of altimeter data that is uh, still a work in progress for us. So, uh, this is the web page uh, of uh, the project uh, that is named is Search Venice, and this uh, is the web page. Uh, so, it's a project, of course, uh, funded by USA and by ESA. And, uh, well, in the, in the web page, you can find, of course, uh, the, sea le the sea level forecast for Venice uh, that is updated, uh, and uh, the, some data regarding some, some storage, uh, storm surge events of the last years. And these are the partners, so I'm from the Institute of Marine Sciences, then we, there is also the Institute of Atmospheric Sciences, and then the Biophysics Institute for Altimeter Data Processing, and then there is also the institution that is in charge of the sea level forecast in Venice, that is the Centro Previsione Signalazione Mare. <coughs> So, uh, speaking about the problem in Venice uh, of uh, high water, uh, the main problem is that, uh, let's say, Venetians want a, re a very accurate forecast, uh, since uh, we can say that uh, all the streets in Venice are almost at the same level. So, if you have, these are the flooded part of Venice, uh, if you have just uh, uh, 10 centimeters of water, higher, you have uh, almost 20% uh, more of the city that is flooded. So if you have uh, an house, uh, a, 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 the home of, of a shop or a shop uh, at the ground floor, uh, you, you, you need a really a very accurate forecast. <coughs> so this is uh, uh, the sea level in the last century in Venice. And uh, these are the uh, storm surge events uh, over uh, 110 centimeters. That is not so much, really. And uh, as you can see, at the beginning of the century, there was less than five uh, uh, storm surge uh, cases per year. But now we are around 50. And uh, there was a, a big improvement a big increase uh, in the 50s just because uh, groundwater extraction that is uh, an anthropo anthropogenic cause that uh, caused the subsidence of the city that now is stopped but uh, at the moment we are around 50 storm surge cases uh, per year <coughs> um, so uh, the, f the main uh, uh, let's say the, the models that are used to forecast the storm surge in Venice uh, are, mailed, are mainly statistical models that uh, like this, uh, they are based on linear regression so uh, these are uh, mainly used at the center for sea level forecast uh, in Venice and they use uh, several predictors uh, that can be, for example, mean sea level pressure, uh, tide gate data, and uh, wind data, and they calibrate uh, a statistical model just to, to give uh, the, the forecast in Venice. <coughs> So these are the predictors, these are the coefficients that has to be calibrated, and this is the residual error that you, you have to, minimi to minimize. <coughs> so for example, this is a picture uh, from the operational model that is running at the uh, ECPSM, a statistical model, and they took uh, the pressure gradients along the Adriatic Sea, and some pressure data from uh, other stations. This because normally when you have a high water in Venice, uh, you have a situation like this. So you have a low here, so you have a wind that is coming from the south, and so if you take uh, the pressure gradients uh, between the coasts, you have uh, good predictors for statistical models. <coughs> 
So uh, the good things of uh, the statistical models is that uh, they are quite accurate, uh, accurate in, in the low, in a, in a short term uh, forecast, till 12 hours about. But uh, the problem is that uh, it's uh, difficult to understand what are the best predictors, for example. And uh, of course you should use a limited number of predictors. And then you can have uh, some problem of overfitting, for example. And uh, of course uh, you predict the level for every day, but uh, when you have an extreme event uh, you can have a a database is, is very short for, for the extreme events uh, with respect to the normal uh, period. So you can have a, a calibration that is not so good for extreme events. <clears throat> So the second method that uh, are used is used uh, at uh, the sea level uh, forecast center is based on deterministic models, and this model was set up uh, by us, and uh, is based on a numerical model that is named Shifem that is open source. You can find it and download it from this web page, and uh, it's a finite element model. And the model is running first on the Mediterranean Sea, and then we run it also inside the lagoon with the second run. <coughs> so uh, the equations are the shallow water equations. We use them uh, in uh, two dimensions. And uh, let's say the, the forcing, of course, are the atmospheric pressure and the wind stress uh, that uh, come from the wind speed, of course. Um, for our purpose, uh, we, we assume that uh, in the Adriatic Sea, we can assume that uh, tide surge interactions are, are not uh, so strong, so we consider tide uh, independent from the storm surge. So we compute the total sea level in Venice like uh, the surge plus uh, the tide uh, and the bias that uh, I will explain you later about it. Um, this because uh, in this way we, we don't consider uh, the astronomical forcing inside our model. We just compute the surge from the wind and the pressure. <coughs> and uh, about the tide we add it from uh, an harmonic analysis so we can add it in some places <coughs> after uh, from making an harmonic anal analysis from uh, observations. <coughs> And about the bias, uh, this is due to different components uh, that is, uh, let's say, to the average wind pressure component and uh, also f um, to the baroclinic forces. So it's uh, like a, a seasonal mean sea level. And uh, the best way to correct them, to correct it, is just to, to take it, uh, uh, to compute it from the last uh, two, three days uh, of uh, observation. So we simply add it uh, to, to the to in order to compute the total sea level. Um, okay, so uh, about the deterministic model, we can say that uh, they are better than statistical model for medium long range forecast <laughs> and of course they don't need uh, uh, they don't need uh, a database a long uh, historical database uh, to be calibrated and they i think that this is an important uh, key point that uh, they are automatically improves uh, with the improving of the forecast of the forcing. So if the atmospheric model improves, they automatically improve. Uh, this is not true, of course, for statistical model. <coughs> and uh, well, the end bad is that uh, they are less accurate in the short range forecast normally. And uh, of course, if the, 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 the forcing is wrong, they, it's very difficult to correct them. And uh, normally they have uh, higher computational times, but uh, we, today is not a big problem, this. 
so speaking about the uh, EO data that we have used, uh, we have used the scatterometer data and altimeter data. So I will speak uh, about the scatterometer data. <coughs> So we have used the scatterometer data to improve uh, the, the force in the wind forcing. This is uh, a graph uh, of uh, uh, the ECNWF wind uh, and, the, and the observed wind in a platform near Venice. As you can see, uh, the wind is uh, underestimated. The main peaks are underestimated. And also the, I mean, the temporal resolution is very low, so you cannot catch some, some peaks. <clears throat> this is because uh, the forcing is a six hour forcing. So we have a big problem of uh, underestimation normally. And this is due also to the low dis um, resolution of uh, the orographic area around uh, the Adriatic Sea because uh, there are a lot of gaps between mountains that, uh, and so you have some channeling effects of the wind. So we have considered uh, uh, 12 uh, storm surge events happened uh, between 2010 and 2012. And we have uh, analyzed the storm surge forecast uh, of these events. Uh, in order to correct uh, the forcing, we have used this uh, methodology. So uh, let's say it's like a wind, tu wind tuning. So we compared the ECMWF wind speed with the scomptometer wind speed, making a, a, spatial, a spatial and temporal interpolation. And uh, we uh, computed some weighting factor both for the wind speed and for the directions. And we made this uh, uh, for each storm surge event, taking a, a, a windows, let's say windows, to compare the uh, altimeter and scatterometer, uh, sorry, to compare the uh, ECNWF and, scatterom and the scatterometer data. Uh, we, t we took a, a windows uh, uh, near all the storm surge events. So the, weight, uh, the weights are different for each uh, event. <coughs> So then we computed uh, from this uh, from this uh, weights uh, we computed the new new wind fields uh, uh, corrected wind fields and then we computed from this uh, the wind stress uh, using uh, uh, some other quantities from uh, the ECNWF model like uh, the sea surface temperature and the air temperature. <coughs> So using these fields, uh, well, this is, a, a, this is a map showing you the, the, weight, uh, um, the weight between uh, the, the scatterometer and the SCNWF data. So you can see, for example, in the Adriatic Sea, we have about, uh, let's say, 0.4 is like 40% of the wind is underestimated. So the wind is, the quick uh, scatterometer wind is 40% higher than the ECNWF wind. So you can see that uh, the wind is strongly underestimated on all on the whole Adriatic Sea. And this uh, map is specific for uh, this SAV, so uh, this storm surge event that uh, was in 2010. <coughs> so this is uh, another sketch uh, showing you the speed and the direction differences for the same uh, event. And this is a, a computation of the distribution of the speed, of the wind speed. These are the original data, and these are the data of the wind speed with the correction. As you can see, we have a higher a tail here. The right tail is uh, it's longer, so we have a higher wind speed. <coughs> the direction is almost the same. <coughs> So 
So, uh, for each uh, event, uh, we computed uh, the simulation with the original wind fields and this tuned wind fields using three different resolutions. So, starting from uh, the original resolution of VC and WF field, wind fields, that is uh, uh, 0.12 uh, degree to alpha resolution and to a low resolution of uh, alpha degree. <coughs> so these are the results, for example, for, of a storm surge for uh, an event uh, that was a storm surge event of 2010. And you can see the blue are the observations, the residual level, observed the residual level, and uh, the red uh, lines uh, are uh, the, the forecast made uh, with the, the, the new wind fields, uh, the tuned wind fields, uh, and the black lines are the forecasts made with the original wind fields. And the different, uh, here are three lines, uh, red and three lines, uh, blue, uh, black, and it are the different resolution. As you can see, changing the resolution is not a very, it's not, uh, it's not improving the, the forecast, uh, but uh, what improves more is uh, just the tu to tune the, the, the wind fields. <coughs> so this is a second case, and uh, that is not so good. Anyway, you, also in this case you can see that there is a, a small improvement uh, uh, just in the peak, let's say. While if you see uh, when you don't have uh, uh, the storm surge event like uh, here, for example, you have almost the same uh, simulation and also before the curve is very similar. <coughs> so this is the skew surge uh, for the 12 events that we have considered. So you have observation here in red and uh, modeled uh, the original and, uh, and the new one with the tuned uh, fields so you can see that uh, the improvement is uh, good uh, in almost all the, the events that we have considered. So this is other uh, statistic of all the events. Uh, uh, well, the interesting here is that uh, is what is changing is just the, the error on the peak of the storm surge. But correlation uh, observation with the, uh, the modeled curve, you have almost uh, the same correlation, uh, sorry, correlation is here, and almost the same root mean square error. So it's just uh, the improvement is, is more evident on the peak uh, of the storm surge. <coughs> And these are the data, so root mean square error, correlation, and peak error. And uh, this is a full resolution, uh, alpha resolution, and one quarter resolution. And this is the same for the tuned data. And, uh, well, the best one is this. So using the tuned data and using the full resolution. But if you, you see that uh, also changing the full resolution to the other resolution is not changing so much uh, the improvement. <coughs> anyway, uh, well, some remarks. Uh, of course, uh, uh, results change if you change uh, the windows where you compare your data to take out the, 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 the weighting factors. And uh, so you have to, to choose the right windows and you have to, to make some, some tests to, to, to understand what is the, the best uh, window to, to compare the data. And uh, of course you, you need uh, quite a lot of scatterometer data in order to, to cover your, your grid. So you, you cannot uh, choose uh, a temporal window is too short because you, you don't have enough data. <coughs> so, uh, let's uh, make a summary of these results regarding the, the, and the, the scatterometer. So we have seen that the spatial resolution is not uh, so important. Uh, 
but uh, we have to say that uh, we have used the same atmospheric model and we just uh, uh, decrease the resolution so we we take uh, some field from uh, the, the full resolution fields, we extract uh, the, the low resolution fields. So uh, the model is always the same. Probably if you change uh, the model and if you take uh, an atmospheric model with a, a real low, low, low uh, resolution, you have a, a better results. And uh, so finally we, we can say that uh, uh, high resolution is important. And then uh, we have seen that uh, the tuning of the wind field affects uh, mainly the, the maximum peaks uh, with, and the improvement is quite, quite good. So now I will turn to the second part and I will speak about uh, uh, the altimeter data. <coughs> so altimeter data uh, are uh, quite uh, interesting because they give uh, a, a good special uh, information of the sea level while if you use uh, tight, gauge, uh, tight gauge you have just an information near the coast and uh, of course the, the method to, to use them is uh, to assimilate them and uh, so you you have to, to follow some these main steps, let's say. So you have to find the tracks in your computational domain and your, in your assimilation windows that you have to decide how long to take it. And then you have to find a, a good quantity to be assimilated. So you have to process them and then you, you have to choose a good assimilation technique. <clears throat> so this is a, a plot of uh, the tracks, uh, of altimeter tracks uh, for uh, one storm surge event, for example, in the Adriatic Sea. So you can see that uh, you don't have so, so many tracks, but enough, uh, much more than the Taich gauge data that you have for the same event, for example. <coughs> This is uh, another track uh, that is near a platform here. Venice is here. This is an oceanic oceanographic platform. And this is the track and this is uh, the correlation between the observation on this platform and on the on the sea surface height in, along the track. So we see that the correlation is good and uh, of course, uh, uh, a good quantity to, to be assimilated can be the total water level envelope. Uh, but uh, in our case, for example, that we don't compute uh, the tide for, for our model, uh, we, we have to subtract uh, the, the tides from, from this quantity. <coughs> so, uh, speaking about the tide, you can... Uh, uh, you can use uh, the correction normally. The altimeter data have already a tidal correction from a model, so you can use it. But you can also uh, provide a new correction for the tidal, uh, for tide. And in this, if you want to do this, you, you need a tidal model, of course. And uh, otherwise you have to compute, of course, the, the tide uh, together with the storm surge with your model. So this is an example of what we are thinking to, to do to compute the tide to, in order to subtract, so, subtract it from the, the atmospheric data. So if you have a model, uh, you need a, a very a tidal model of the Mediterranean Sea, for example, here, and to, ride, uh, to run uh, the model for at least one year, and then you can find the, the you can extract the sea level from each node of your grid, and you can compute the with the, an harmonic analysis for each node in order to find the the, the coefficients for each node, and then you can with these coefficients you can find the the a good correction of the tide for each uh, track of your altimeter simply interpolating the sea level near the tracks so 
this uh, is uh, a system. Uh, so, uh, when it is useful to assimilate uh, altimeter, uh, altimeter data can be useful to correct the initial state of the system. So, uh, the question is uh, how um, important is your initial state uh, for storm surge forecast? And this depends a lot, I think, from uh, to to the the system that you are looking for. I mean, it depends if your uh, system is very big, or very small, for example. And to understand, in order to understand the, the importance of the initial state, uh, uh, you can. Uh, try to find the spin-up time of your system. So, uh, this is just, uh, the let's say, the time uh, that uh, is uh, wh where you, you can see an initial perturbation that is going on. If you, if you apply an, a perturbation to your initial state, you see this perturbation after maybe five, ten days. And so you can understand if your initial state is important or not. Uh, normally for the Adriatic Sea, the importance of the initial state is due to the sash phenomenon. So this is uh, uh, an example of a storm surge. Venice is here. So normally you have the wind. When you have uh, high water in Venice, you have the wind that is blowing this direction. So the water is piling up on the North Sea, on the North Adriatic Sea, and then uh, if you, even if uh, the wind is stopped, uh, this water starts to oscillate along the Adriatic Sea. So these are the sash that uh, for the Adriatic Sea, they have a period of uh, 22 hours, uh, and uh, there is a second sash with a period of 11 hours. So if you uh, model, if you want to model this uh, a storm surge event, you need a good description of this sash. If you have a sash that is going on, you need to reproduce uh, it well. For example, this is a, a, a residual level from observation taken near Venice. So here you have uh, the main storm surge peak. And then you can see that uh, after the main storm surge peak, also in the days that are following, you have other peaks that are about, these are about uh, uh, 22 hours. And these are the sash. And uh, you have something also before. So let's say that uh, for this peak, uh, you have uh, a contribution due to the, the wind that is blowing, so of the storm surge, let's say, and the contribution due to the uh, sash that you had for a previous event that was still going on. <clears throat> so you need to, to have a, a good initial state uh, of your system to, to forecast uh, well the, the surge. So I will make now a small, uh, short introduction on data simulation, and mainly on variational, variational data simulation. These are different methods. So going from the most simple uh, to the last method. So uh, the purpose of the data simulation is that to, to improve the initial state of your system, trying to make a minimization of all the errors. And you can do it, this uh, comparing uh, your model results, let's say, with the uh, observations. So, for example, this is uh, the, for the for the var formulation. So you have uh, a cost function that is named this J, and you have a different uh, source uh, uh, that uh, 
let's say, sorts of errors. So you have uh, errors that are coming from the model, that because your model is not perfect, of course. Errors that are coming from uh, observations and errors that are coming from uh, your initial state. And you try to consider all this error in one function that is uh, just uh, this j is just a number and you have to minimize, uh, minimize this function with respect to your initial state. So uh, we have uh, we have an assimilation system that is using another formulation that is called dual form, uh, dual for the uh, for the var that is uh, very similar. It's just a uh, change in the variables. Anyway, going on, this is a sketch that is showing you the cost function. I mean, it's a, a very simple two-dimensional cost function, and uh, you you have to try to, to, to mi mi minimize this cost function. So you start uh, from your initial state that, that can be here, and finding the value of the cost function of, uh, of the gradient of the cost function, you find other, other initial states until uh, you find the last uh, in, uh, state that is called the analysis state, that is the state that minimize your cost function. So, on the variational methods, uh, this is made, uh, uh, making many runs, you, you choose an assimilation uh, windows, window, where you can find, uh, where you take all your observations that are this, that are not well visible, and you have to run the model first in one direction, and try to find uh, the difference between the, the model and the observation. And uh, at the end of one run in this direction, you have the value of your cost function. And then you run a second model that is named a joint model, and you come back, and then when you are here, you f find uh, the gradient of the cost function. So you have to go uh, for many times in order to minimize the cost function. You make many steps until you arrive uh, to your analysis state. So this is an example. So we have set up this system just with the tide coach, uh, tide coach data. So we have several tide coach data along the Italian coast. So this is uh, your initial state that is called background state without assimilation of data. And this is uh, after the assimilation, the data, the data assimilation. So, of course, changing your initial state, uh, when you run the model, uh, the forecast will change. <coughs> so, uh, these are the stations that we are assimilating just now, the red one. Uh, as you can see, the, the bad thing of tight coach data is that they are just along the coast. And you can, uh, so you cannot have the center of the sea. And we don't have data in uh, the other side of the coast, uh, for example. So altimeter data, of course, can uh, improve this situation, can give uh, a more complete uh, description of your system. <coughs> um, this here is a. Uh, uh, these are some comparison between uh, uh, altimeter data and uh, uh, model data along the track. So, as you can see, we have work uh, to in order to 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 assimilate this data because uh, altimeter data are this one. As you can see, we we have some peaks that uh, are difficult to, to assimilate. Probably we have to, to, to smooth this curve. And these are other example of altimeter data. So they are a bit noisy. And um, so we have to, to think about this in order to, to, to assimilate them. But you can see from the previous 
one that uh, normally the the shape is very similar so if you assimilate them uh, you can uh, really have a, a good improvement otherwise the second method is the one that uh, you have seen before that uh, was made in the in the North Sea <coughs> So finally, to conclude, uh, I think that, uh, well, uh, you have to, 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 to make yourself some question in order to understand what are the forecast uh, errors of your system, to understand if it's the wind, the main uh, errors are on the wind, or are the initial state, and uh, to know what are the EO data that are available in your study area. And then we have seen that, of course, uh, tuning the wind uh, can be effective. I mean, we have tested it on the Adriatic Sea, but uh, if you have some problem with the wind, that if you normally you have some problem with the underestimation of the wind, uh, this method uh, can be a good, uh, a good, uh, a good method to try. It's not uh, so so difficult to to improve it. And then we are st uh, still working on uh, data simulation. Anyway, uh, we have seen that uh, altimeter data can provide uh, very good uh, information where we don't have observations. So. <laughs> We have just to, we are now trying to post-process uh, altimeter data in order to assimilate them uh, with uh, an assimilation system. So that's all, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you.